Uh, greetings, everybody. My name is uh, Mrs. Dakarai Yvonne Makumise. I'm glad to be standing in front of you. It's such a great honor. I would like to just take this opportunity to thank the leaders of the church for giving me this opportunity to come and share with you. I, I'm just it, um, thinking about the times that we are in. I'm sure as you are watching me right now, you are watching me in your homes, and some of you are really thinking about what will be the outcome of this. The word that I just want to encourage you with this day is that there may be a lockdown in every aspect of our lives right now. Maybe we are not able to go to places where we want, we will not be able to do business, we will not be able to gather, we will not be able to do so many things. But I want to encourage you, one thing that I know is for sure, is that there is no lockdown in heaven. Heaven is open. Amen? The Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, they are still open. And they are still taking our calls. Jeremiah 33 3 says that, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Psalms 121 reminds us again that he who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. We can still call upon the Lord. He is there to hear. Our, my encouragement to you today, child of God, is that heaven is open and it will never close. 24-7, 24-7, covid 19 or not, heaven is still open. I hope I've settled you down and I hope I've welcomed you. So today my teaching is going to be following the journey that we are taking on this Easter conference. We are taking the journey that Christ took until the time of the crucifixion. And uh, my part today is to share on Pilate's court, what happened in Pilate's court. And I'm sure we all are familiar about the, familiar of these stories. But before I start, I would like to just share that uh, this, um, this narrative is given in all the four Gospels. And uh, each one of them gave a narrative. Like, for example, in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, we find this narrative in Matthew 27, verses 11 to 20, Mark 15, verse 1 to 5, Luke 23, verse 1 to 10, John 18, verse 28 to 38. So when we are talking about um, Jesus Christ in Pilate's court, there are so many things that uh, come to one's mind and what one comes to see. We'll just start by just the Gospels as they narrated this, this encounter of, 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 of Jesus Christ in, Pil in Pilate's court. We look at uh, how each one put their narrative across. So when I look at it, I'm looking at it and saying to myself, if I was living during that time, what could I have said? What narrative could I have said? And one would not help to think that maybe each narrative was given by each author according to their relationship with Christ or maybe according to how much they related with Christ. So I just want to just uh, uh, want us to to look at each one of them. Unfortunately, for the sake of time, I will not be able to read each one. I will read only from John. In Matthew, I would pick out what each one spoke about, which was unique. In, in the book of Matthew, that is the only place where uh, Pilate's wife talks about um, Jesus Christ and about how she, she did not sleep about the inter intervention that she had during that time. And uh, how also Matthew talks about how the Roman soldiers facilitated the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And then in Mark, apparently Mark gives the shortest account. Mark makes no unique contribution, although he does join Matthew in telling us that Pilate had figured out that, Jesus, that the Jews had turned Jesus over to him out of envy. So Mark is one person who talks about how the Jews turned Jesus over um, 
to, 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 for him to be tested because of envy. And this is, we find it also in uh, Mark, t Mark 15 verse 10. And Mark only wrote about 20 verses. And the next person we encounter is Luke. Luke's account is about 25 verses long. And uh, in, in Luke alone informs us that Pilate sent Jesus to Herod. Out of the, the four of them, the one who gives us an account of uh, how Pilate sent Jesus back to Herod was Luke. And the longest encounter we find also in John. And John gives us the longest and most detailed of our Lord's um, hearing before Pilate. So I just want us to just read now from John 18. I will start uh, from, from verse 28. This is where we meet uh, Jesus in Pilate's court. The word of God, please can you get to your Bible and get to that scripture so that we will we'll discuss together. Then the word of God says, Then let they, Jesus, from say Cephas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. I want you to mark uh, this verse 31. And we move on to verse 32. That. It says that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake signifying what death he should die. Mark verse 32 as well. Then verse 33 says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him saying, Thou, thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom. I want you to mark that. Verse 36 as well. Jesus answered and said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king of art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou said that I am a king to this end. Was I born, and for this cause came I unto the world, that I should hear, I should bear witness unto thee, unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Mark verse 37. And verse 38 says, Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? Mark the word that says, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. So if you get an opportunity to read about this encounter in the four Gospels, you will encounter all those different aspects which I've told you the different authors gave. So on this particular uh, ministry, I just want to just make you meet the different people that we encounter in Pilate's court. In Pilate's court, we come across the Jews. We come across Pontius Pilate himself. We come across across Herod, and we come across Jesus and the Roman soldiers. What I want us to really zero in today, I want us to look at the different statements that were made in Pilate's court. And I want you to look at those statements in relation to where you would be, suppose you were in Pilate's court during that time. The four statements that I want us to look at the most are these. From verse 31, I want you to write the first statement as, we can't legally put anyone to death. This is the new King James, the new NIV. But, the, but my one says that uh, the Jews therefore said unto him, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So we can't put legally, 
We, we can't legally put anyone to death. That is verse 31. That would be my first statement that we'll look at. And then the second statement is from verse 38, where Pilate says, what is truth? I want you to ask yourself where you are is, and ask yourself, what is truth? Amidst what we are going through in this time and in this season, what is truth? And verse 30, the third statement would be from verse 37, where it says, You rightly or correctly say that I am a king. This is what Jesus answered, how Jesus answered Pilate there. He said, You rightly or correctly say that I'm a king. That is from verse 37. This is all coming from John's encounter. Like I've said, we are going to look at John's encounter because it had more detail. And then verse the fourth statement would be from verse 32, where it says, this happened to fulfill the word Jesus spoke, indicating what kind of death he was going to die. Hallelujah. You know, this is a very, very intimate time, especially for us children of God, even for those of us who do not know Jesus. I'm hoping by this encounter, you will then understand who Jesus was. The first statement we, we encounter is, we cannot legally put anyone to death. What I want you to understand is, in this journey, we are now meeting the Jewish people who wanted to have Jesus killed. Because for all this time, the Jewish people were hoping that Jesus would be their Messiah from the Roman rule. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> because they thought the Messiah had come. The one who was working out miracles, who was turning water into wine, the one who was healing them, the one who was feeding them, the one who was meeting their needs had come. But now they get to be disappointed because Jesus talks about a different kingdom that they do not know. So now, remember these people that we are talking about, the Jewish people. They were used to taking justice into their hands. If we read from Acts 7, we see them stoning uh, Stephen. What they really wanted was for them to stone Jesus Christ. But in this case, at this moment, it was going to be very difficult for them to stone Jesus Christ because Jesus was now in the public eye, not only in the Jewish eye, but also in the eyes of the, of the Romans and the other nationals that were there. So they could not stone Jesus. And that was going to just happen without it fulfilling scripture. So we then meet them now when the Sanhedrin has has already ar ar arrested Jesus. And the Jews, early in the morning, they go to Pilate's house. Can you imagine? Pilate was sleeping, and now the Jews, I'm sure it was really early, early in the morning, before dawn. And they were saying to Pilate, come out, come and give us justice. Come and give us justice. What you need to understand is that Pilate was a governor. He was the governor of Judea. Because now the Roman Empire had been divided into different provinces. And uh, initially Herod had given the different provinces to his children. Because one of them, this is going to tie up with what I'm going to say later. One of Herod's children had not ruled well. So he had to be removed. And in his place, they put in a... Uh, they put in Pontius Pilate. So Pontius Pilate was meant to oversee the, 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 the governance of the Jews in his area. So they went to Pontius Pilate because they wanted Pontius Pilate to bring justice, which they thought he would just rubber stamp. But when we read there, we realize that the Jews stood outside until Pilate had to come out because they did not want to come out. They did not want to go into Pilate's palace because they were afraid of being defiled. Because this, remember, was the time for Passover. This was the Passover season. So they were really wanting this to be done so that they would just quickly go and have a Passover. You know, this reminds me of this time. That with what we are encountering, so many people did not want to come to church. So many people did not want to enter into the house of God. I don't know for whatever reason. But we see in this case, the Jewish people refusing to enter into Pilate's house. 
And then Pilate comes, comes out. Because probably they'd frustrated him, waking him up early and saying all sorts. They thought he would just say, oh, what is it? Just go ahead. But we notice Pilate did not do that. He actually decided to give them time. He, he asked them if they wanted Jesus to be, to be brought under judgment. And, he, and they told him what they felt was wrong with what Jesus done. The person who gives us a, a, a brief encounter of the accusations of Jesus, which Pilate was asking the Jews, saying, why are you accusing this man? Why are you accusing this man? And then the three things that came out, these come out from Matthew 27. The three things that come out, the first one was that uh, they were saying that he, he had blasphemed, that Jesus had blasphemed, and that Jesus, uh, he was preventing, he was forbidding the payment of tribute. He was pro, pro, prohibiting the payment of tax, and that he was claiming he, he was claiming to be the king. And they thought by saying that they were going to threaten because everybody had to speak right of Caesar. So by claiming that Jesus was king, it was more like saying, oh, we don't want Caesar, we want Jesus. But Pilate decided to listen. And when Pilate has, had done that, we then realized of, re, re, read of the encounter of how Pilate then in his inquisition realized that he, Jesus, was a Jew, and the Jewish people had their own system of, uh, of judging people. So when he realized that Jesus was a Jew, he then asked them to take him to Herod, because Herod was the one in charge. He was a Galilean. Jesus was a Galilean. Herod was the one who was in charge of the, of the, Gal of the Galilee territory. So when they took him to Herod, Herod was, instead of, uh, of, of wanting to judge, he was actually very inquisitive. I'm sure all his life he wanted to see this Jesus that they were talking about. The encounter tells us that Herod actually went to ask Jesus whether he is the, he is the man who performs miracles. And the question is, today, we still see a lot of Herods in our midst. How many of us are still questioning the authority of Jesus? How many of us are still questioning the leadership of Jesus? How many of us are still mocking the work that was done by our Lord? And then Herod, when he realized what was happening, he did not want to give them the Jewish people satisfaction. He then said, take him to Pilate. But we then see in this encounter that for the first time, we are told that Herod and, uh, and uh, Pontius Pilate were common enemies. But this time they had found a common enemy. How many of us become friends because we have a common enemy? This is the case that happened today. I'm just praying that even in this encounter that we, are, we have a common enemy who is the COVID-19. That the Lord may help us to for, put our differences aside, like what Herod and, and, and Pontius Pilate, I know it's not a very good example, but to tackle the matter at hand. So Jesus is now taken back to, to, Pilate, to Pilate's court. And then let's go to the next statement. What is the truth? So you see what happened was the Jews were standing outside. Pilate had to take in Jesus into his, into, his, into his palace and to have a bit of conversation and was asking Jesus, what is this they are saying about you? And then Jesus was, was telling him that, yes, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is of the Father. I want us to understand that we have misunderstood the kingdom of Jesus, even today. We have, understood, we have misunderstood the kingdom of Jesus and equated it to prosperity, to, to a car, to a house, to fame, to money. But Jesus says that my kingdom is not of this world. So to, to, to you, my question is, what is truth? What, how do you see the kingdom of Jesus? What is the kingdom of Jesus? And then Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? I just want to say something here. In summary, we can see that Jesus says, 
I am the truth, the way, and the life. This we find in John 14, verse 6. Jesus is the truth. And Pilate was surprised that he thought Jesus would say, yes, I'm the king of this world. I'm going to fight. I'm going to send my army. I'm going to send my soldiers. But Pilate did not do that. Because Jesus had already shown that his kingdom is not of this world. Because remember when Peter took out the knife and cut out the, the ear of the soldier, Jesus put back the ear and healed that soldier. To show that, no, his kingdom was not defined by the way we are defining it. I'm hoping that in this encounter we are having with the COVID-19, you are going to encounter the truth of Jesus. You are going to encounter what the kingdom of God is, child of God. Amen. The question shows that Pilate believed in the truth. But the truth that Pilate probably believed is what most of us are believing this day. We are saying truth is whatever you want it to be. This is what most of these religions that do not believe in Jesus Christ say, oh no, there are so many ways to Christ. But Jesus says, he is the truth. And he is the way and he is the life. There is no way to the Lord, there is no way to the kingdom of Christ except through Jesus Christ. I just want to say something here that whenever one loses faith in the fact that there is absolute truth, whenever one loses faith in the fact that Jesus Christ is the absolute truth, there is only one standard by which that person's action can be measured, which is political correctness. Because we have lost truth in Christ, now we are looking for politics to answer our questions. Now we are looking for other things to answer our questions. Child of God, I want you to remember that Jesus says I'm the truth, I'm the way, I'm the life. What truth? If the truth is that the gospel is the truth. The truth is we are saved by Jesus Christ. That salvation is the only way. Accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior is the only way we shall experience the kingdom of God. And in this time, one would ask themselves, what is the truth? COVID, if COVID goes and is finished, what is the truth? If what is happening, your hardships go, what is the truth? Ask yourself, if your marriage becomes better, what is the truth? If your child comes back home, what is the truth? The truth still remains that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We even see Pilate's wife. She says, I did not rest. Hallelujah. Because she knew the truth. The truth could not rest. Cause her to rest. Many people in this day are in the valley of decision not wanting to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Today I bring to you the truth, that Jesus Christ is the truth. For you to understand the kingdom of God, you need to know the truth. Hallelujah. And now let's go to the next statement. This is from verse 37. Jesus, you are right in saying I am the king. This is what Pilate asked Jesus and said, so are you the king? And Jesus says in verse 37 here, he says, the truth, it says that thou sayest I'm a king. To this end was I born and, and for this cause came I into the world. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the king. Jesus acknowledges that he is king. In that particular instance, Jesus did not deny that he is the king. He is the king yesterday, today, and forever. COVID-19, no COVID-19. Your situation, your circumstance, economy going down, economy going up. Jesus Christ remains the king. He is the king. Hallelujah. And the fourth statement is from verse 32. The Bible says that, let me read it from the word. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying that death he should die. Hallelujah. All this was happening, child of God, so that it was fulfilled. 
what was said in the word of God, that Jesus Christ was going to die at death and he was crucified. So if the Jews they would have not taken Jesus before Pilate, there would be no crucifixion. Remember that the, the Romans had a different type of judgment. For them, a person who will have uh, gone against the law was crucified. But for the Jews, it was different. The Jews did not crucify, they stone. So because they were accusing him of blaspheme. Leviticus 24, 16 says that when he blasphemes, the name of the Lord shall be put to death. So they were hoping that Pontius Pilate, Pilate would just say, crucify him. But in this case, Pontius Pilate knew that the Jews had a way of their own law. In their law, they were given one criminal who was allowed to be free. So in this case, he then, Pilate took advantage of knowing the Jewish law. He asked the Jewish people, what do you want? Who do you want to release at this time, at this Passover feast? Pilate was hoping after all his investigations, he had noticed that Jesus was free. He was hoping that uh, they would say Jesus because Jesus had not committed any crime. And he was also trying to live with himself after what his wife said. And then Pilate said, release whoever they, you want. And the Jews, to his surprise, they said Barabbas. And Barabbas was a murderer. So Barabbas was released. But Jesus Christ had to go and fulfill what was written by the prophets in the word of God, that Jesus had to die a death of crucifixion. So when we, according to the scripture, we then realize that Jesus had to be crucified, which was according to Roman judgment. So we thank God that Jesus was crucified. We thank God that Jesus died on the cross because it is at the cross that a Gentile like you and me, that a sinner like you and me has been delivered to be allowed to stand before the Father, to be allowed to be able to call God Abba Father. Amen. To be allowed to be called the children of God. We thank God for such a time, child of God. But before I close this session, I just want to ask you a question. I want you to be honest with yourself. How many times have you brought Jesus to Pilate's court? How many times have you brought Jesus to judgment? How many times? Right now, in the midst of COVID-29, a lot of us are blaming God and are saying so many things. A lot of us are judging God and saying so many things. Child of God, I want you to realize that the kingdom of Jesus is not the kingdom of this world. It is a kingdom that brings salvation, a kingdom that allows us to call Daddy Father. I would just want to conclude by saying, you know what? When my sons were still little boys, when, my, when their father would be coming from work. They would run and run and run when daddy has come home. And they would say, daddy's home. Daddy's home. Amen. Because there was relationship with them, which was the same in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were able to converse with God. They would run when the father would come and say, daddy's home. But because of sin, we are not able to run and say, daddy's home. Because of sin, we are not able to, to pray, to converse with God. Child of God, I want you to come today because Jesus said, what is truth? The truth is, he is the way. He is the truth and is the life. I want you to come and give back your life to Christ. I want you to come and, and, and repent before the Lord. If you are a Christian, you have given your life to Christ, but you know that your walk has not been right before the Father. Today, we want to say, dead is home. He is here. The Lord is here. In the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of an ailing economy, in the midst of sickness, I want you to come back to the Father. He is willing to take you back. Hallelujah. Indeed, the King of Kings has declared that indeed I am the King. So I want you to remain with the truth that Jesus Christ says. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. I just want to conclude by praying. I want you where you are to pray. If you have not received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, 
take this opportunity to receive him. Dear Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace. So many a time, Lord, we have sinned against you. We ask that you forgive us. Your word says that if we, if we believe with our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. Today, Father, we are believing with our heart and we are confessing with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Would you receive us, Lord? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, beloved. God bless you. Amen.